Well, you know, it's hard to believe we are here at another episode of Fostering Change. And by the way, it's my birthday month. That's exactly right. Don't forget, I tell everybody, go to Facebook. You can do a fundraiser on your birthday. 100% of the proceeds actually go to the nonprofit that you choose. And the next nonprofit who's my guest, I'm actually really lucky that I get to call her my friend. You know, we have actually been working together for a couple of years now. And I'm so, so happy that the support that she and her organization gives to Comfort Cases. And if you follow us on social media, which I can't imagine that you're watching this podcast and you don't, you hear us talk about this organization quite often. And one of the things that I absolutely love before I have my friend Jessica come on is I've got to tell you the funniest story. So whenever we get these beautiful blankets that we're getting ready to talk about, when when the order comes in, we have a certain number of volunteers who always want to know when they're coming in. And the reason for that is because we all gather in the room and we pull these beautiful blankets out and each one of them are like, that's my favorite. Oh, no, no, that one's my favorite. So listen, everybody, without any further information, because we're going to talk to Jessica, I want to introduce you to Jessica Rudolph, who is the CEO and founder of My Very Own Blankets. Jessica, welcome to Fostering Change. Thank you so much for having me. So Jessica, I want to start from the beginning. Um, what, what exactly made you start this organization? And the other question I know my um, listeners and viewers are want to know is, how many blankets have you sent out? Well, we I started this 23 years ago. And at the time, I had not had any experience with foster care, had not known any foster children, um, had no experience. But what I did have is I had three children of my own. And I had, they happened to be, I had two beautiful boys and a darling little girl, and they happened to be one, two, and three years old. I know, I know. And oh so I, it sounds like the shears, you know, when, when our babies are babies. I love it. 96, 97, and 98 is when okay. I had them all. And so in 1999, I was one night, I was laying them down. I was going to just do one bedtime. And so because I couldn't, I thought if I do three bedtimes, it's going to take me forever. And so I made one nursery, put two cribs and a toddler bed in the nursery and we did our bedtime and they, I laid them down in their beds and I was sitting in a rocking chair so that they could see my presence and I was knitting a blanket. And so each night as I laid them down, I'd knit a couple rows of this blanket. And one night I thought, I saw that they had a blanket of their very own. So I thought they don't need another one. And I thought, who could I give this blanket to? And I sat there and I was thinking about it and I thought, I could knit this for a child in foster care because I always heard that they didn't have very much. And so I thought it gives me goosebumps. I know so I, I said, I'm getting goosebumps too. I didn't know this story. So I said, you know what? I'll just knit this over the course of the next year and I will um, give it away to the area County children's services next Christmas. And so I thought, oh, what if I ask other people to help me do this? So I sent out a one page flyer asking friends and family to just help me make one blanket because I said, you know what, we're all so busy, but if together we do a little bit, then we can accomplish a lot. And that's how I got started. That is so, you know, what you just said is so true. If together, you know, we do a little bit, it's like a huge effect. And by the way, these blankets are a huge effect. You know, I, I've i written about them in my book. I talk about it in all my, my talks is that my son, Grayson, who was five years old at the time, when we started this organization 10 years ago, he was the one who said, daddy, we have to put a blankie in every single case. And I actually said a blankie I was like you know these kids aren't cold and he said to me daddy every time they wrap themselves up in their blankie they know we love them Mm. you know and I truly do believe that that's what you know blanket makes you feel um I have to tell you that your blankets though are just so amazing that you know I love the fact that there's so many people who have helped make the blankets you know I I want to jump to 
the you know label that you put on each one of these blankets because we by the way at comfort cases we read every single one of them before they're rolled up and ribbon uh -huh. on them so it says a special gift of love made just for you this belongs to and then you give a line for somebody to write the child's name and it says handmade by and this particular person wrote you are loved mary ann uh -huh. so Every one of your blankets get one of these. They do. Everyone. It's one of my most favorite pieces of the whole blanket because that little tag says so, so, so much. First of all, we want these children to know that they are loved. So we silk screen those here in our workshop and I wanted to make them be two different colors. And our old, I, if I can tell you a story real quick, our yes. old eggs um just said my very own blanket a special gift of love made just for you and then my very own blanket and then it just it had a line for the child to write their name on but nothing else and so one time i had the uh, blessing and the experience of being able to give older youth blankets and as they were selecting them um, a couple things was happening one that was so special was that um, I saw them and watched them pick up different blankets and they had the biggest smiles on their faces and they had a couple blankets in their hand and they couldn't shoot they couldn't it's like they couldn't figure out which one to choose and I thought to myself wow we just gave them back their gift of choice when kids can't choose where they live what I mean their life is so uncertain and they've lost so many choices, they can choose their blanket. And so then one young lady, she looked at me and she said, she had a couple blankets in her hand and she looked at me and she said, someone made this for me. And I said, yeah, they made it just for you. And the next question just shocked me. She said, who are they? Who would do something so special for me who doesn't even know me? And I thought, you know what? I need to redesign those tags. And that's when I designed them, redesigned them so that the second line said handmade by. And so we put two hearts because again, we want them to know love, you are loved and, and feel loved. And um, so that way they can see that someone else, the name of someone else who made that. And it's my hope that they feel someone else is really, truly in this with me. And then I encourage people, write a note to them because when we can't be there with them every night and every day, um, when they, they may not be having a good day or they may not be feeling very good about themselves or where they are, their their notes and their words will be with them every day. And so that's why I just, I love those tags. And, um, and I do, I say- yeah, I love the tags and I, I love what you the story that you just told because I remind people every time, and by the way, everybody, you know, we all should realize this. You do not have to know someone to love someone. You do not have to know them to love them. And the love that these kids get when they, and, and by the way, you know, Jessica, I have had kids ask me the same thing. Why would somebody do this for me? And they don't know me. So kids in foster care are so used to the fact that everybody who does something for them is doing something for a reason because of something they're getting out of it. And to, for kids to, to understand that someone actually is doing something for you because they actually love you. And, you know, even though they don't know who you are and they'll never meet you, or maybe, you know, your paths will never cross, they love you. And the, the love that I see in these blankets, and by the way, you know, just so everybody knows, when, when the blankets come in, um, my team, um, they roll them, they put a ribbon around them, and then they go into our comfort cases. And by the way, we've given out over 185,000 cases. And I can tell you that, um, probably no less than maybe 25,000 have actually had my forever blankets in there. Tell me how many blankets have you sent out? Oh gosh, we've sent out hundreds of thousands. When I first started this, it wasn't really my goal to keep track and, you know, keep counting and, and which is by fault of mine, but it's just, you know, I just wanted to get that love out. So, but I can tell you that this year, our goal is to give 30,000 children in foster care a blanket of their very own. And we're just over, yeah, we're almost to 19,000. 
Wow, 30,000. First of all, it's kind of bittersweet. You know, yesterday I was on a call with my friend from um, the CEO of the Dave Thomas Foundation. And, you know, we were talking earlier about the fact that it's kind of bittersweet that we have our jobs. I mean, we actually would like to be out of a job. But as you know, you know, I mean, this year alone, they're projecting over 230,000 children that will enter foster care. And knowing that they enter literally with the clothes on their backs and not Nothing that is truly their own to be able to give them this blanket. Listen, everybody, um, I am telling you right now, my very own blanket.org. Um, you have to visit. When we get back, we're going to talk about how you can get involved and support this amazing organization. We'll be right back. This episode of Fostering Change is sponsored by Comfort Cases, a national nonprofit that inspires our communities to bring hope and dignity to our youth that are in foster care. For just $10 a month, you can support the Comfort Case mission and help us eliminate trash bags for kids who are entering foster care. For every $10 that you give, Comfort Cases will give a Comfort XL to a child entering the system. Be part of the change. Visit comfortcases.org. Well, you know, I say this all the time. There's nothing more than I love than a great conversation, but especially when you have a conversation with your friends. You know, Jessica, you know, as we were talking earlier about the blankets and, you know, the fact that you've done so many of them, you know, do you ever get any feedback um, from, let's say, the families who are receiving these children in foster care about how that blanket truly is making an impact um, for this child? Yeah, we do. So we get um, letters and notes back from foster families and parents that have said, you know, thank you for seeing. It's a blessing that you saw a need of ours, because when a child comes to us with one of your blankets, um, it makes that first night just that much more peaceful because they're coming with something that they can hang on to, they know is theirs, whether it's, you know, the blanket and the custom case bag, they know it's theirs and it's, it's their things. Yeah. I love, I absolutely love that. You know, that, that first night for any child, you know, and especially for even the foster parents, it is so uncertainty. It is so, it, it, you know, I remember the first night that each one of my children arrived and, you know, they didn't come with a blankie. Um, they didn't come with, you know, barely anything. And I just remember how sad they were. And, you know, knowing that, you know, these kids are going to receive one of your blankets as, you know, they're, they're trying to, maneuver through a system that, you know, is just beyond unbelievably shattered. It's, you know, I love that. You know, I see, you know, because number one, I follow you and because I know you as my friend, I I see the such the growth that, you know, that you, you have. I mean, you're getting blankets from all over the country, by the way, that people are helping you, but you are actually um, changing the narrative of something that I, I see that, you know, we've talked about at Comfort Cases for quite a while. An example is when we had children who were coming over from the border um, unaccompanied and we knew they were going into foster care. We also knew that they did not speak our, speak our native language. We were making sure that there were books that were bilingual um, that were in the cases. And I hear that you, you're do, getting ready to do something as well when it comes to that. We are. We are. So it's super exciting with that growth. We've been able to um, move up into, we're all over the U.S. We've also been able to move up into Canada. And with that, we have started to create our special tags in Spanish, written in Spanish and French. Wow, that is so amazing. See, you know, I think it's so, so important that we all understand that, you know, it is it is up to us as community leaders. And by the way, you are such a community leader. I mean, you're somebody, I mean, you've done a TED Talk, you've done a TEDx Talk. I mean, you are definitely what I consider a true leader. Um, and the fact that you're making this step with your organization um, to include everyone include everyone. You know, we have so many listeners and viewers who they love to get involved. And I know that I have people that are listening that quilt and knit. And by the way, some of the quilts that you send us, I, I mean, they're pieces of art. 
They're literally pieces of art. I gotta tell you a quick thing. So in July, we have this um we have this event that we do with Jen Lee and her team at christmasisnotcanceled.com and um we this July we happened to just get a a shipment of of quilts that you had sent us and blankies and um one of my team members was looking and you sent us one and had a, it was a christmas tree mm. And it could not have come at a better time. And so <laughs> that Christmas tree quilt actually got hung during this event. And then I had people saying, can I buy that? Can I buy it? And we were like, no, it's going to go into our, one of our cases. But I just, it was literally a piece of art. So how could our listeners and viewers, how actually could they help get involved? And let's say that they're in Arizona. Yeah. So, so many people will say to me, um, I want to make a blanket. How can I get involved? And my first question is, is do you know how to sew, knit or crochet? And if they do, we love that. So we love the material blankets, the knitted crocheted blankets. When you make those, you can go onto our website and get our tags to be sent to them. And, um, and when I say to be sent to them, my vision was always when I started this in the beginning, 23 years ago, was to keep the blankets where they're made. So mm -hmm. when people contact me and say, oh, I just, you know, found your, your organization online. I want to make a blanket. How do I get involved? And I say, start making blankets, but don't send them to me. What I want to do is keep those blankets in that area for them to help to support them, to support their kids in care in their area. And then we get, you know, lots and lots of blankets that are sent to us. And then that's when we send them out to you guys and to um, children's services and agencies. Yeah, I love that part. And by the way, you should get signed up with givebackbox.com. Um, for nonprofits, they um, you can send up to 79 pounds to a nonprofit for only $15. And so you, we should definitely talk about that because it's a great organization that support organizations like yours and I, mine. And as we know, shipping is something that uh. is the, oh, my God, you know, I say this all the time, Jessica, if if one of those big shipping companies would just step up and support us as nonprofits, do you imagine the more work that we could do? And oh, more, yeah, you know, because shipping eats so much away in our budget, you know, it yeah. does. you know, where do you see the next step? for your organization? Because like I said, you're all over the country. You're helping so many thousands and thousands and you've done hundreds of thousands of blankets. Where are you going next? Well, like I said, we're starting to gain more, you know, um, awareness in Canada. We're also in the U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Thomas, St. John, and St. Croix. Um, but we just actually started as well in Australia, wow. in Sydney, Australia. So um, we're hoping to to work more and more over in Australia. I happen, well, my kids now um, are 23, 24, and 25, and my 23 and 25-year-old actually live in Sydney. So when I went to visit them this last time, I said, you know what, I think we need to properly introduce my very own blanket to Australia. I love that. I absolutely love that idea. And I love the fact that you're really involved in the Rotary um, because, you know, the Rotary for us is it was the very first grant we ever received, you know, was from the Rotary. We love the Rotary. They support us. Um, I actually was so, so humbled that I received the Paul Harris Award from the Rotary. Um, it is there just absolutely amazing. And I love the fact that you're doing this growth part because people need to understand that children are involved your care all over the world. So many, so many people say that to me when I say something about, you know, going to St. John or, you know, Australia. And they said, they have, they have kids in foster care. I said, yes, they're everywhere. <laughs> They're everywhere. I mean, yeah. it's so, so we just, our organization, we just grew as well. And we're in the UK now. And people were like, they have kids. And I was like, you have to understand there is a child in foster care. Now, sometimes they might call them orphans. You know, mm -hmm. we have, we've become that politically correct. We don't call them orphans any longer. There is no place in the world that there is not a child 
in the definition of what we consider foster care, where they are taken away or they are out of the home of their birth parents. And what you guys are doing is just amazing. Listen, Jessica, I absolutely love you to death and you know that. I'm excited about some of the partnerships that we're going to do. By the way, everybody, if you're listening to this, you're an organization, this is exactly what nonprofits are supposed to be doing, working together working together. Because when you work together, we actually could solve a problem a lot quicker. Um, and that's what Jessica and I both want to make sure that we do. Listen, everybody, please go to my very own blankets. Jessica, my last question is, I don't know how to sew. I don't know how to knit. Sorry, I'm just not that person. But I really <laughs> want to help you. Um, what can I do? So on our website, well, you can make a no sew fleece blanket. So on our website, we have blanket kits for everyone to get involved from kindergartners up to 102 year olds. Um, and, and you basically just take this polar fleece material that's amazing. It's soft, it's colorful. And we put together these blanket kits. Um, you can get them online on our website and they are ship, they'll be shipped to you. You can make them, you can ship them to to you, Rob, and you can put them in the cases and it's cutting and tying and the tag is pre-sewn on and you get to sign the tag with your name and a amazing little note to that kiddo. And, and you can do it all in 40 minutes. I love that. You know what? Listen up, everybody. You got a birthday coming up and you're looking for your young kids to do something that is impactful, you know, buy those kits. I mean, that is what a great idea. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, you know, any church groups. I've got ch church organizations that reach out to me all the time and they want to find something to do. You know, go to my very own blankets.org. Jessica, it has absolutely been a pleasure to have you on Fostering Change. And I can cannot wait to see where you and I are heading next. Um, and we'll make sure we keep everybody in touch. Listen, everybody, you're going to be able to have a link right here to be able to visit my friend Jessica's website. Do me a big favor, continue to do what I say all the time. And that is be a good human. Take care, everyone. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for listening or watching the latest episode of Fostering Change. All of us on our team hope that you've learned something new today and have been inspired to be a good human. Now, just a reminder that you can always find Fostering Change on your favorite channels on Google, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and others including, of course, comfortcases.org. I want to give a big thank you to all of you for joining us each and every week. And a reminder that if you have a suggestion for a guest, or maybe you might have a question about today's podcast, or are interested in becoming a sponsor of Fostering Change, please don't hesitate to email me personally at fosteringchange at comfortcases.org. Now, that's it for now. Thanks again, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Take care.